A man both confined and performed unspeakable acts on his own niece, an international student, over the course of two grueling days. The full extent of his actions would go unknown for years, until a mysterious USB drive turned up in an inexplicable way years later. One of the worst fears a parent could have when their child studies abroad is obviously that something might happen to them. However, usually if they were able to live with family overseas, this would definitely ease the parent's worries. In some cases, though, it shouldn't. This is the story of a Chinese university student named Meng Mei Lang. A student excelling in economics and business management, Lang was living alone with her mother in Chengdu. Her father passed away in 2008, leaving only the two of them behind. Lang always dreamed of studying abroad, though, eyeing a school in Sydney specifically. Her mom knew that she had always wanted to go there and decided to support her venture. A few years before, in 2012, Lang's aunt had actually gotten married to a man in Australia, a man in his mid-twenties named Derek Barrett. Lang herself even got to go out and attend their wedding. Derek was formerly an IT worker, but lost his job along the way at some point, remaining unemployed. Lang's aunt, who was at least 10 years older than him, did most of the work, going out to Wollongong on business trips fairly often. Given that Lang now had family out in Australia, her mom didn't oppose the idea of her going there to study as long as she lived with them. So she took the opportunity and flew out, coming to live in the southwest Sydney suburb of Campsie in 2011, along with her aunt, cousin, and uncle. Lang started going by the name Michelle during her time in Australia, becoming somewhat of an adventurer. She posted pictures of herself in all sorts of places, like the West Head Lookout near Sydney Harbour, at Resolute Beach, in Chase National Park, and Wherry Beach on the south coast. She often hung out with her friends, posting pictures of them having cocktails and hanging out together like a normal college student. For several years, everything was seemingly very normal, as far as she knew. Derek Barrett appeared, to those around him, to be a normal, dumpy little guy. He was awkward, into computers, and pretty timid. He seemed shy, but never really came off as antisocial or malicious in any way. To anyone around him, he was about as unremarkable as a person could get. Little did anyone know, he was a budding sexual deviant behind the scenes. Derek had developed a fascination with not only Lang, but also her cousin, his own stepdaughter. He didn't keep this fascination inside of his own head, either. After a few years of living together, he let his fantasies take control and went down a darker and darker path. At some point, he set up a camera in his bathroom, hidden behind some toiletries. To test it out, he got the bath ready for Lang, calling her out to come and relax. She did so, and he recorded the whole thing. He didn't limit it to this one time either, continuing to film her as she changed clothes and showered on numerous occasions. He even started filming his stepdaughter as well in this same manner. He began setting up cameras in both Lang and his stepdaughter's rooms as they slept. He would record them sleeping as he would stand over their beds and pleasure himself over them. He took tons of these videos, ranging anywhere from 30 seconds to several minutes long. But Derek wasn't even content with going this far. Thursday, April 21st, 2016. Michelle Lang went out to the Sydney fish markets at inner city Darlinghurst, having a normal day shopping. After a while, she caught a train to go back home to Campsie. Her friends said that they saw her at a bus stop near UTS just before a long weekend was about to start. They had thought that maybe she was meeting up with someone for a date. She had been communicating on social media, but all message and posts suddenly stopped. This was something that was very out of character for her. She always kept in touch with friends and family, always letting them know where she was heading. This sudden halt to all communication immediately put those around her on high alert. Lang's aunt, Derek's wife, was once again away on work, leaving her home alone with Derek as her cousin was out as well. Derek decided that, now that he was alone with her, he was going to take this chance to take his creepiness to an unfathomable new level. Little did anyone know, Derek was also doing a lot of drugs recently, namely ice. He apparently hit it pretty well, but it undoubtedly wasn't helping with his degenerate fantasies. The next morning, Derek set up a few cameras around Lang's bed like he had done before. This time, though, was much different. Rather than one camera, he set up a few from multiple angles. On camera, he took Lang into the room. Confused, she asked him what was going on. He quickly overpowered her, putting some duct tape over her mouth and tying her to the bed. He took off her clothes, proceeding to take over 20 pictures of her naked body from all different angles and distances using his phone, even zooming in on her terrified face. 
He wasn't content to stop there. He then forced himself upon her over and over again while the cameras rolled. The camera captured all of the brutality, pleas for her life, begging, tears, and eventually cries of pain as she began to bleed from, I'll just say, multiple areas. At one point, her arms and legs began to swell and turn purple due to how tightly she was bound. Derek calmly readjusted the tape before going right back to doing what he was doing, saying, Now, where were we? To the camera. For 13 minutes, he filmed this act until the main camera fell over. It didn't stop there, though. The camera continued to record the audio as Lang screamed at Derek, calling him crazy, telling him he couldn't do this to her, all while she was completely tied up, unable to move. All of this had been clearly planned out, with Derek recording everything for later viewing. He put the video from the camera onto a USB drive, stashing it away for later, while he kept the pictures he took on his cell phone for easy viewing. These assaults continued to take place over, possibly, two whole days. During these two days, Derek's stepdaughter came home. Little did she know, her cousin was gagged and restrained in her bedroom upstairs the entire time, even sleeping in a room right under her. At some point during these two days, while Derek's stepdaughter was still home, he walked back into Lang's bedroom. He took one final photo of her before stabbing her over 30 times, finishing with one final blow to the throat. Derek wrapped her body in plastic, put her into his car, and headed out. He stopped to get some drinks along the way, being caught on CCTV at a convenience store. He ended up at Snapper Point on the New South Wales Central Coast. He threw her body into what they call a blowhole, a hole in a cliff leading to a sea cave through which air is forced by action of the sea. Derek then took some pictures of the scenery and hopped back into his car. He drove to his parents' house for a quick visit before returning back home. It wasn't even a whole day before Lang's body, wrapped in plastic, was found by a tourist visiting the area. This tourist notified the police who retrieved the body. Given that she was completely naked, they had no way to identify her for the time being. For now, they released a computer-generated image of her face in hopes that the public could identify her. The next day, Derek's wife got home from her trip to Wollongong. Considering her niece's lack of online activity and lack of contact, and not to mention the fact that she was missing from the house, she was very concerned. She wanted to go and report her missing as soon as possible. She, along with Derek, went to the Campsie police station to report her missing. While doing so, they provided a photo of Lang that matched the CG image of the missing girl from the day prior. They were also able to provide a toothbrush and some hair from her comb for a DNA analysis. It was confirmed that this body was Lang, and she was long gone. Lang's mother back in China was devastated by the news. As soon as she could, the mother came from China with a few relatives to be on the scene. The police continued to scour local CCTV and traffic cameras in order to map out Lang's final moments. While doing so, they continued to interview her friends, family, and associates. Derek said that Lang had left on Friday, going out on a date with a man she met online, a man he described as having golden hair in his pictures. However, CCTV footage had captured a car entering the national park where her body was found the day before, a car that matched Derek's. They believed that her body was inside this car. Not only did this car match up, but Derek was also believed to have been the last person to see her, saying that he saw her at dinner the night before. The police questioned him. Suspiciously, Derek refused to answer any questions about his personal relationship with Lang. Needless to say, they were pretty damn sure they had their suspect. They grabbed his phone to check his GPS data, finding that he had been in the same area that her body had been found. On his phone, they also found evidence of Derek's unhealthy obsession with both Lang and his stepdaughter coming across videos of him standing over their beds. Not only that, but while checking his phone, they came across the horrific photos that he had taken of Lang, tied up and in fear. While they had these pictures, they didn't have the video that he uploaded to the USB drive. While it was obvious that he had tied her up and killed her, they didn't know the full vicious extent. Knowing that his time was up, Derek frantically tried to delete the evidence from his phone, albeit unsuccessfully. Derek, now 31, was indicted on multiple charges, including unlawful imprisonment and murder. He was denied bail as he awaited his fate. Derek got a lawyer, Bill Whitby, who told the Burwood local court that Derek would be pleading not guilty, saying that he was very upset about the death himself. Derek never did apply for bail, though. He continued to show a complete lack of emotion as he appeared on video in various hearings. After his cell phone was more thoroughly searched, Derek was hit with several more charges. 
These included five counts of commit act of indecency, 17 acts of film persons private parts without consent, two acts of install device to film, detain for advantage, and two counts of filming a person in a private act without consent. Derek would admit to seven counts of indecency and aggravated sexual assault in relation to the videos. Derek went to see a psychiatrist, telling him, I lost everything because of a stupid weekend. Adding, I let my own problems spill into the family home. Derek wrote up a letter addressed to the court, but seemingly more aimed at Lang's mother, that said, No words can begin to describe the emotional pain I have caused you and the family. I can only imagine what you must be going through from your loss. Every moment of my life, I wish I could go back in time and take back that day that has caused so much pain. This moment in my life has kept me awake at night in tears, and I still have nightmares. Derek tried to blame this whole thing on both drugs and a traumatic childhood, even saying at one point that he had amnesia surrounding the entire incident. According to him, all he remembered was having an argument with Lang and then coming to his senses standing over a bloody sink. However, given the amount of time it took into planning and cleaning this up, nobody really believed him. He said that he never wished ill will on anyone, saying, all I can do, in some small way, is commit my life to trying to make up for what I have done. In 2017, Derek was finally jailed for his crimes, getting a very light sentence, all things considered, of 34 years and 6 months. Given that the court had only seen the photos on his phone, they didn't know the full scope of what had really gone down, or that it continued over the course of possibly two entire days. This led him to get off much more easily than he otherwise should have. You might think that the story ends here, but no. This is where the story actually turns from horrific to both bizarre and horrific. In November of 2019, two years after the sentencing, a woman came out to visit her elderly, dementia-ridden mother in her home in Strathfield. She noticed that her mom was clutching something, a small USB drive. Having no idea where she would get her hands on something like this, and curious to know what it would even contain, she popped it into a computer. She was horrified to see the sight of a man forcing himself repeatedly on a bound, gagged girl. She contacted the police immediately. Investigators described the nine videos found on the USB as heinous. A compilation of all the videos taken over the course of the two days was about an hour long, starting with Derek entering the bedroom, continuing to the point where the camera fell over, but then with several more videos he had made over the course of the entire confinement even after that. Already locked up in jail, Derek was all set to face a resumed sentence hearing once these new details came out about the attacks. A psychiatrist visited him to assess his mental health once again and felt that, at first, there wasn't much to note about him. His opinion changed, however, when they spoke about the murder, with Derek still claiming that he had amnesia and didn't remember a thing. The psychiatrist didn't buy it, saying his behavior after the murder didn't suggest that he had no memory of the attack, saying, if someone had really, truly forgotten what happened and they came to and saw a dead body in front of them, they normally call the police or an ambulance or do something to try and help the person. The doctor testified that it was his opinion that Derek had either a schizoid personality disorder or an autism spectrum disorder, noting that he also had a voyeuristic disorder and a sexual sadism disorder. Lang's mother requested, again, for the judge to update Derek's sentence to life in prison. She told the judge, in April 2016, the death of Meng Mei had brought a great pain to my whole family and I, a single mom trying to support her daughter who is an international student in Sydney. My healthy mother was in such grief that she too passed away, not long after receiving the news of Meng Mei's death. Derek went on to face a new hearing with all the evidence on the USB drive in hand. This new evidence showed that Derek fully enjoyed what he was doing all throughout the horrific act, and the doctor noted that Derek continued to minimalize his actions and blame drugs. In fact, Derek had even been recorded as saying that this was simply one bad episode, that he wasn't some sort of psycho. He even said that he had consensual sex with his niece, which added insult to injury. Derek was sentenced in the NSW Supreme Court to 20 further years without eligibility of parole for at least 12, pushing his earliest possible release, with the earliest parole he could possibly get, to the year 2052. Justice Helen Wilson said, These horrendous crimes can only properly be regarded as amongst the most serious examples of such offenses that the courts have seen or likely are to see. Miss Lang's personal integrity was cruelly defiled by an offender who took pleasure in hurting, humiliating, and degrading her. 
The offender manipulated Miss Lang's body as if she were a worthless inanimate object, and treated her with the most callous and injurious contempt. She said that, if the full extent of the crime had been known back in 2017, a life sentence would have been imposed. It's still completely unknown how the old woman in Strathfield came in possession of Derek's USB drive. It had been several years since the murder, she had no connection to the Barrett family, she never left her home beyond her front yard, and she lived six kilometers from the former Barrett home. Police feel that this aspect of the case is a mystery that will never be solved. Once again, thank you for watching my video. If you found this one interesting, please give it a like, it really helps me out in the algorithm, and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. If you don't mind, go ahead and follow me on social media, because when anything does happen to this channel, that's probably the only way you'll be able to hear about it. If you want to support the channel even more, I do have a Patreon account, which I always keep linked down in the description below. This has been your host Kyle, thank you, and good night.